Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, we'll be collecting all of the components for and setting up this. This is a drip fed fertigation into hydroponic grow media bagged system with a 80 liter reservoir pump and drip irrigation system and supplemental lighting for the Tasmanian growing seasons. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this system and we're going to look at similar systems nearby in Tasmania that grow berries that this system is based upon. So the idea today is to set up a system for lettuce, strawberries, or any small crop within a small space like this. This is my friend Leith's patio, and we're gonna go inside and meet him and see what his requirements are for a hydroponic system and how we can implement them within the space confines of his house. So this is Leith. Leith is a really good friend of mine. I've come all the way from Queensland down to Tasmania to visit. How long have we been friends for now? Ages. Yeah. <laughs> Ages. We've been doing a bunch of hikes and stuff around Tasmania, just enjoying ourselves really. Um, but what we're trying to achieve today is we're trying to get him a hydroponic system that's productive in the small space, which is this patio. And you've already been trying to grow your own food a fair bit here. Uh, what are the challenges that you've been... So I've got a couple of challenges. Uh, one is that uh, there's not enough light down this end. So this is sort of stationary, can't really move it, but there's not enough light down this end, so everything gets really leggy, slow growth as well. Yeah, and a few pests as well, yeah? Yeah, a few yeah. pests. Cool. You said that the way that you planted out the system, you were kind of misled by my channel a little? Yeah, I got stitched up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. all right. Well, Watch, well, watching the videos, you're like, yeah, yeah, it's like this this far between all the plants, and then you plant it, and you've got to have so much more space. I'm watering every single day as well. I don't. You don't. I don't even... I, I can go a week without going into that greenhouse and it all waters yeah. itself. So I think we can get him a more productive system in a more compact footprint than this one. And we've even considered putting the system that we're gonna build here, but there's no way. I can't even lift that because the orientation of this space is, it's actually not too bad. It gets a fair bit of sun, yes. but the Tasmanian sun is completely different to what I have in Queensland. And as the days get shorter here, what's the length of the day in it'll winter? Get shorter. It'll, it'll basically mean that this end doesn't get any sun. It loses probably five to six hours of light a day. Yeah. So his whole growing season is going to shorten in winter. It's lovely now because it's light until like almost nine o'clock. This polycarbonate above us is also not really made for growing because it's an opaque gray. Yes, you will have sun coming through it, but I'd say that it's even cutting your sun down even more. We're going to supplement with grow light. So the system that I'm designing today will be taking advantage of whatever sun it gets as well as the grow lights within the system design. I recently built the NFT pipe system and you liked that one. Loved it. Like, <laughs> make me this one. But yeah, yeah. So I've come up with a new design that is going to incorporate based on a design from a berry farm that's just down the road. It's on the way to Bunnings. So we can check that out, have a look at the way that they fertigate into cocoa and we can kind of implement that into a system that's got a similar footprint print and layout to my NFT system, but utilizes bagged media in a way that can be fertigated into. So let's go to the hardware store, grab all of the stuff that we need for the build, and we can check out the strawberry farm that's just up the road. Got to get to Bunnings. So this is the berry patch, and we're gonna have a look at how they're growing the berries. They might not even be open because it's Monday. Monday, Tuesday, close. Yeah, that's right. Just grab it up here. Yeah. yeah. Slow down. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So if we can get as close to those, yeah, keep going and stop here, please. Beautiful. That's absolutely perfect. Okay. So. The berry patch is closed, but I'm going to show you what we're trying to achieve here by just walking up to the side of the um, property. As you can see here, um, all of our berries are being grown uh, 
essentially hydroponically. So they're being fertigated into these bagged cocoa blocks. And at the end, you've got these channels that the cocoa blocks are housed within. And it's just fertigating into the top. The fertigation is just hydroponic nutrient that's being pumped via the irrigation. And it's fertigating into the top of the berry bags. And these are all empty berry bags. I'm just showing you so that you can see how the bags work. And over here, we have all the berries. As you can see, we've got irrigation coming up and each bag is filled by what would probably be a four millimeter irrigation line. And you've got the strawberries growing out the top. So this is essentially the idea we're going to go with for the systems that I'm designing today. We're going to have a bagged cocoa media with four millimeter irrigation line feeding each of the bags with, we're gonna put drippers on top and I can't see how these lines are feeding but they've probably got a dripper. If not, they're feeding directly into the cocoa, which is the bag substrate. And I'd say they're not even collecting the drainage. I say these are just drained to waste. So the, the excess water would just drain into the gutter that they're in and then out. But their irrigation cycle would be dialed in so that they wouldn't get too much runoff. So this is what we're trying to achieve, except in a closed system rather than the open drain to waste system that this berry farm is using. We're here at Bunnings, where are we? Devonport. Devonport, Bunnings, Devonport. And we're going in to purchase all of the stuff that we need for the build. Hey guys. How you going, mate? We need a trolley and get the rest of it. So, so what tools have you got? Drill. A drill? Handsaw. Handsaw. Squares. Yeah. So we're looking for a pump now for the system and we'll just use a pond pump. So just a small literage pump, pond pump. Okay, so because it's a small system that we're building, we just want an extra small pump. I'm gonna go this one because the system is only going to, it's only going to be lifting about 0.4 meters or 40 centimeters. So um, this is going to be perfect. I'll grab that. I'm going to get this hydroponic grade of cocoa, which is uh, one of my favorite mediums to grow in. And we're going to irrigate it with our pump from a container that we're going to have placed below it. So we're going to grab two bags of this cocoa Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm looking for a way of feeding the top of the bags um, in a consistent manner with the flow from the pump. So I'm gonna get these trickle stakes. Uh, they essentially allow you to adjust the flow of a four millimeter pipe so that I can split the pump into the flow. Okay, so hopefully we've got everything we need. Leith's just packing the car and we're gonna head back and assemble this system that I've cobbled together as we went. They <laughs> <laughs> got the sign that says you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've got all the things we need. Now we can set up the system. Okay, so I'm just gonna run through the stuff that we'll be using today. I've got this five shelf metal storage unit, which is an MDF storage unit from Bunnings. It's just one of the cheap ones. And we'll be assembling that and adhering this vinyl covering to the shelves so that they're waterproof. We'll be using various 13 millimeter pieces. So some elbows, some T's. I've got four millimeter poly tubing. So we're inline tricklers and we've got end tricklers as well. Our pump, which we'll be running 13 millimeter tubing, two barbs, which will then feed the tricklers. You will need a pump. This is the AquaPro AP550, but this is fairly expensive. It's about 30 something dollars. So I'll put a link in the description to the cheap Kegland pumps that are available from the Kegland website for a lot cheaper with a lot higher flow. I've got barbed taps, so we will be able to adjust the flow on our 13 millimeter tubing. And the 13 millimeter tubing I'm gonna be using is just the garden hose that Leith has excess of. We're going to be using these as propagation domes on top of a premium hydroponic grade of cocoa peat. 
I'll be using the Manutech hydroponic nutrient. This is a great hydroponic nutrient. It's just a little bit more expensive than the one I use, but I've had really good results with it. And if it's the only one available to you, just use it. I've got a countersink drill bit set because we don't have the right size. We actually do have the right size drill bits. Probably actually have it exactly. Yeah. But this is a good drill bit set to use. It's only $6 if you want to create cheap holes. So they're, they're large counter sinks and they'll create a large hole. So we can use those if we need to. Actually, yeah, just bring what we're using over. Um, Leith already had a Makita drill and symmetric drill bit set, as well as oh, the spade bits that probably ruin the plastic. I won't use them. I've also got an emergency silicon for if I do any damage to the system or I need to seal parts in the design that I'm considering. For the seeds, we'll be planting cos lettuce into this system. To control the pump, because it will require frequent but very quick irrigation cycles, I've got this smart plug-in twin energy socket, and this is going to allow us to dial our irrigation cycles into increments that are less than 15 minutes, because the mechanical ones are 15 minute increments, and we want to be irrigating less than 15 minutes. That will also allow us to control these lights. These are the Spider Pharma SF600, and I've brought them down with me on the plane because Spider Pharma gave me a bunch of them to play around with, and I'm giving these ones to Leith so that he can have his system running all through winter and have produce all through the cold and dark months of Tasmania. The last thing I'll need is a reservoir, and I've bought two of these tubs. These are Montgomery 100 litre storage containers. And the reason I've bought two is they're about $20 each and I needed two of the lids. Leith said that he could use the bottom of the container for something around the house. We needed two of the lids and the lids are going to be used as catchments for our cocoa. The cocoa will be sitting on top of the lid like so and the lid is going to act as a catchment for the nutrient that escapes the cocoa and is going to drain back down a pipe into our system. Now I'm just stealing some hose, some Leith's hose, uh, which has ruined his hose. <laughs> okay, so now I've got myself an assistant. <laughs> I'm actually gonna get you to do the boring, monotonous part. Yeah, yeah, so like, I, I mean, I should get, an, I think I should get a full-time assistant to this. Because I'm gonna, this is gonna go twice as fast as it normally would. This is going to be the base container at the base of the system. And I wanna make it so that Leith can lift the entirety of the cocoa peat and all the plants straight off without having any mess of like irrigation lines and whatever sticking through this lid. Um, so like he can lift you can so that you can lift it and sort of just put it aside with the bag on top Rip this out and then refill it or just top it up actually going to drill holes for the four millimeter tubing In the side here, but it does mean that you'll have to only fill it up to just below those holes. So that's fine Hey, yeah, yeah, so you get like 75 liters. I don't think that's you'll be heaps. yeah. Yes <laughs> funny for the pump, it's going to be a really basic setup. So we're going to connect up our pump to our 13 millimeter tubing, which is just garden hose at this point. And that is going to house our four millimeter barbs for our four millimeter tubing. I've actually got an end plug for this hosing. So I'm just going to plug the end. You could just um, zip tie it closed, but I didn't want to buy a whole pack of zip ties for one zip tie. All right, so now we're going to put in our four millimeter tubing. So each of our bags is going to be fed with two inline tricklers and one end trickler. And each bag will have two four millimeter lines going to it. Now this is by design. I was going to do one four millimeter line per bag and then split it. But this way, if one blocks up, it's still got the redundancy of the other one. Do you have like a skewer or something? A skewer or like this? Uh, actually, Just don't worry. Thing. Yeah, these are actually oh, sharp. How good. Yeah. So that will just push straight in. These drippers come with our four millimeter barbs because for each of the ends, we've got our barbed spike. We can push this barb into our 13 millimeter tubing and that will actually allow us to feed all of the lines and these ones are inline, so they just have 
coming in one way, going out the other, and it doesn't really matter which way it goes as far as I'm aware, and then adjusts the flow on top. And the fact that these are adjustable is good because the lower level will be needing to be adjusted down and the upper level up because the top level will have less pressure. And I'm actually going to put a tap in the pump before we split our line into our four millimeter tubing as well. Cut this again, put in our tap like this, and we're just gonna push this straight into our 30 millimeter garden hose. Oh, that worked well. And that is what it looks like with our barb in it. Are you trying to put no, this onto it? I was about to, it's cut yeah. ready to at least to cut yeah. size. Sweet, but what you wanna do is Rest take it out and wrap it. Yeah, like a Christmas present. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So now I've got all my barbs in place. Put it into my reservoir and that can just sit at the bottom. And it looks like this. Um, I'm gonna run all of the tubing out the side here. So I'm gonna drill some holes in the side and then we can start setting up the tops. Oh, we could put a um, float valve in here if you like got, got lazy. Yeah. Because- Or I'm going away for a month. You're going away for a month. So you, all you need to do is order one online, yeah. put a tap fitting on it, and then you can have it run off your tap and then refill this. And then if you make the nutrient slightly stronger than it needs to be, it when it starts, work it, it'll work its way down. And then you can just, you know, go away and not yeah. worry about the lettuce. They'll never run out of food, especially with the um, cocoa, because it will hold the nutrient. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't even worry about like making the nutrient slightly stronger. You can just leave it on water and then that, the, it'll, like, it'll go for like two or three grows with yeah. the nutrient in that much cocoa. How good. And it looks like that. And these are gonna be our feeder holes for our four millimeter piping. Oh, forget how short the bloody cords are for these. I don't need double adapter, dude. Why? Because you got that. You got two of... Oh, you got two lights? Mm. Yeah, okay, so you gotta go double adapter into that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wrong. That's wrong. I'll include that. <laughs> <laughs> And I've just made a little nick in the top for the pump cord like that. I want to grab a drink. Do you want a drink? Yeah, just some water, dude, I reckon. Yeah, a beer? Beer, yeah, we can do a little beer in the fridge right now. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Yeah, nice. Mm. Mm, Tasmanian beer. beer is good, hey? Mm. <laughs> yeah, moo. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got the shelving set up and Leith is finishing off the treatment of the shelving with the vinyl adhesive so that if it gets water on it, it doesn't swell up. And we can set up our system and our pipes to feed from the trays, which will be catching the nutrient underneath our bags. Media. We are going to drill a hole, which is 30 millimeters in the back corner of the trays. So rather than using a really large drill bit, I'm just going to use these cheap counter sinks to put holes in the lids. And I have one pipe in each back corner of the system. Whichever way the concrete is sloping, I'll have Leith have the system sloping in that direction. Let me just slide that That's in. Okay. It makes a hole. Yeah, I can just silicone around that. At the end, we'll just silicone these down when I'm not gonna be messing around with it. They'll be stuck in place and collect all of the excess nutrient that runs off from the bag. And they'll run back down into the reservoir. For the base, I'm gonna drill out all the corners and you can drill out as many holes as you like to drain as much as you like out of the base because you're not just trying to collect the nutrient, it's just gonna fall back down into the reservoir below. This is actually pretty cool because it's got like, it like drains back into these middle sections. Mm. So you can do this. The weight's gonna bring it towards the middle as well. Yeah, yeah. If this overflows, you just put more holes in it. No, if you think about the, how much There's water's coming through. There's only four mils coming in each. Exactly. There's way more than four mils in each. I think it'll be fine. Okay, so that's our base one drilled out. So I'm now going to run the four millimeter tubing from the barbs on the pump up to the top of the reservoir where the first bag will be and up to the first level where the second bag will be. Okay. Cool. Which will reach all the way up and across to here. Okay, so now I'm actually going to run the 12 millimeter hose from our two 
T pieces that collect the top and we're going to run it down and into the side of the container from being irrigated down back into the reservoir. That actually seals if you use a countersink because it melts the plastic and the plastic yeah. causes a seal. Have you um, ever done any plastic welding or anything? Oh, that's that? next, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that seal that it causes. Can you bring that camera in? See the seal that it's causing when you countersink. And uh, I'll show you over here actually, because I'm going to do another one. But I'll push it through. It's melt. It's melting it as it countersinks through. And that can seal around whatever you're pushing through it like that. That's sealed around the hose, that's cool. Okay, so we can use that in the future to seal plastics. The countersink will melt it so that it seals. That's very cool. All right, pull that through. Okay, so this is the system. We will be placing our cocoa bags on top of these catchments and the cocoa bags will drain into the catchments when we make slits in them. So this is a cocoa bag and this is going to be our hydroponic growing medium. This is a hydroponic grade of cocoa. Uh, I have actually done a video on how to amend cocoa if you don't have access to the hydroponic grade. Also, there is a video on how to bag, to bag up your own cocoa that you can watch as well and I'll be bagging up this sized bag very soon in the immediate future. But until then, we'll just use these. These are about $14 from our local hardware and you'll be able to do multiple grows out of that bagged media. You won't just get one use. So I'd say you'd be able to get, you know, three or four grows until you start to see negative signs in the grow. This can then be used in something such as Leith's other dirt based growing systems. This will add water retention as well as nutrient retention and it will add whatever nutrients is in this into his other systems as well. Coco is a really good soil amender. It's not going to go to waste once he's finished using this. So what we're going to do to this bag to start with is we're actually going to poke holes all throughout the bottom. We don't want water sitting in it. We want it to drain away nicely. So I'm just going to go along and poke holes. I don't really want to ruin the integrity of the bag itself, but we want it to drain freely. And we might do some in the side as well. This is going to allow air into the substrate as well as water out. So now that the bag has holes in the bottom, we're going to flip it over and cut holes for the planting. Uh, Leith just pointed out, we probably want to silicon up these two first. Um, they're pretty well sealed though. This is just going to make sure that these two are completely sealed. Lick it. Lick it? Yeah, 100%. It works. Oh really? Yeah. That's useful advice. Actually, yeah, that's working well. <laughs> oh wow. And as they say, do your best, so look in the rest. Just add some no more skills in. <laughs> no more skills. Yeah, there's the brand of the, you know, the gap filler. <laughs> yeah, 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 no more gaps. And I'm going to cut open the top ready for our irrigation spikes. And we're just leaving enough on the edges so that it kind of retains the grow media. So for those who don't know, this is cocoa peat. It is just coconut husk that has been made into a fine growing media um, by being washed of the sodium and potassium and amended with calcium and magnesium. It is otherwise a nutritionless growing medium, which is purely hydroponic. We're going to add to this our irrigation tubing, which is going to be fed into our irrigation spikes. So we're going to have them in an orientation, something like this. Now, obviously the bigger the bed, the more spikes. You can have two or three, depending on how many plants you've got and how thirsty they are. That's going to feed all the corners of the bag and the rest will just wick together anyway. So the whole thing is going to wick. So we're going to connect up our irrigation line. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom shelf. While I'm here, I'm just going to add in the points where I'm going to hang the lights. So I'm going to drill a hole in these shelves and I'm also going to add in the shelf and the top will be for leaf to propagate seedlings in 
propagators because the top will actually be in the light, the natural light for some of the day, which will be good for seedlings. And the middle can be his storage section for all his hydroponic equipment that he's bound to pick up from the addiction that he's about to get. The perfect amount of shelves. I much prefer this size um, shelving to the little one that I use. I would, if I was gonna do it again with the NFT, I'd use this size. It's just better. What fit size containers matter too? Very much so. Oh. And these are going to be hanging directly above the system and providing light, well, supplemental light, but also in the winter, like most of the light that these plants are going to get are gonna come from these two lights. And they will just sit in the system like this for this system because of the footprint. You could probably get away with the SF300, which is a cheaper, smaller version, and it hangs probably about that long. If you wanted a cheaper option that actually utilizes the space a little better, because I did design this on the run, that is a perfectly adequate light as well. I'm just gonna pass this through to you. You can even thread it through if you like. So the way that it works is it threads this, threads through the hole, and, and then down. back down through the butterfly. It's, it's easy. It's literally the same setup at, um, at Bunning. Oh really? Yeah. For what? It's a picture hanging setup. Oh, it's a picture hanging setup. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, so it's just something pre-existing that they've adapted. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's pretty much perfect. Um, and what I usually do is, um, because I don't want the water running down into the electrical, I'll run the electrical up and then off. And this is what it looks like with the spider farmer lights above that system. And because we can't move that at the moment, it's gonna stand in front of it closest to the power point where we can get it. So Leith just mentioned what I meant to do, but I'm setting it up this way for the looks so that it looks better for you guys. But he's gonna flip it around and have the hoses coming down the front because it, the concrete slopes this way. And he wants this to drain down into our reservoir at the end that the hoses are on. So now we have to connect up the pump and the lights. Now to do this, I'm gonna use this smart socket because what I'm wanting to achieve with the pump is that I want it to irrigate every three hours for like one or two minutes. Depending on the flow that I can achieve with the pump, we'll have a play with that as we test the system out. The lights I'm going to have on 16 hours. This smart socket will let us control two separate timing cycles so we can have one for the lights and one for the irrigation cycles now we're going to fill up the reservoir underneath add in our hydroponic nutrient and we can test the irrigation cycles so this is how leaf would change the nutrient essentially um, we're going to take the cocoa off the top so we just remove the cocoa and the plants essentially we can put that aside this can now be taken out and emptied it's actually probably better if those weren't so sealed, so you could just pull them out the back. Um, but other than that, you can just tip it forward. But you could figure out a way of making that a lot easier as time goes on. Here's a good one for you guys. If you didn't have these going through holes, if you just made little notches like this, you could just take the whole pump system out and slide these hoses out and rip the reservoir out. So I didn't think about that when I put the holes in, but next time I would just put in little notches because then you could notch it and then put the lid back on. As maybe something you want to do if you're changing your res next time and pop them off, rather than just put a big notch in yeah. and have them run out the notch. Yeah. yeah, sweet. So now we're going to fill this up to just below where all the holes I've made are in it. And then we can add in our hydroponic nutrient. So this is going to be about 80 litres of nutrient because it was a 100 litre container and we're taking about 20 litres off the top. I'll hold it. I'll turn it on. Yeah. Man, you got some pressure here. I'm not used to this. You can hold that because it's gonna, Jeez. Okay, so for the purposes of today, we're gonna keep it super simple because uh, we don't have any pH measuring equipment. We don't have any electrical conductivity measuring equipment. So I'm gonna assume his water is clear, clean, and it does look that way because it is Tasmanian water, which is absolutely spectacular. We have a five gram and a one gram measuring spoon that comes with our nutrient as you can see and we're going to use that to get our ec correct so we're going half strength um, so we're doing 12 of 12 of part one eight of part two this won't mean anything for your nutrient 
So just do a half strength mix of whatever nutrient you have, unless it is a leafy green nutrient that actually tells you the strength for the recommended dose for leafy greens. And I'm mixing this up into hot water. That just allows the nutrient to dissolve a lot faster and you get a more consistent mix when you add it into your water because it dissolves and doesn't just sit granular at the bottom. One, 10. And counterintuitively, we're adding part one second and we add calcium nitrate first. We'll add in our calcium nitrate. Mix it up. Then we'll add in our other nutrients. Now we can add on the top to our system and connect up the pump and make sure that it feeds properly. <laughs> now I can turn on the pump. I'm actually gonna close all these off first. Apparently, like, I think they can get pretty flowy. So I'm just gonna plug it straight into our PowerPoint. Oh, look at that. Okay, yes. <laughs> How good is that? That is on the top shelf and you can see they're feeding it out. So it's feeding out of the top and just, we just undo them if we want more flow. So I can undo that and it's like going faster and we can do it up if we want less flow. And that is just going to feed. It's not, it's not meant to spray, it's just meant to drip so that it then causes a wet spot that then radiates out and the capillary action, it's pretty cool, hey? Yeah, yeah. the roots will end up pulling it where it wants it to. Yeah, exactly. Well, the roots will just find it. This just dripping this in this fashion will wet the whole bag. It'll just radiate out from where these drippers are working and they're not gonna clog. So these won't clog as easily as a sprinkler system. You can see here, it's draining out as it's feeding. Now our pump is pumping. I'm just gonna let those drippers keep running until we get the bag completely moist with hydroponic nutrient and we can set up the lights. So I'm going to now connect the lights to our PowerPoint. Yeah, they're so bright. I oh, know, you can't look at them. Yeah, you can really start to see it already going, coming out. Yeah, you can actually see. Actually, that's a good shot. You can see here how it's soaking the area around and it's radiating out from the dripper and it's happening everywhere. So that's the case on all of the irrigation points. Okay, so I've now got both lights hooked up and this is what the system looks like. You can't really see the lights as well as you could without the sun beating down on me, but they are definitely doing their job and they will definitely extend the growing season. Leith just pointed out that the bottom one is getting wet faster than the top one. So the way that you would fix that is you can just do up the... Yeah, reduce the drip. Yeah, reduce the drip. It will increase the drip. So it will actually shift like faster than you think it will. Because if you reduce this, this is going to increase. So yeah. yeah, just play with it until you get that drip going perfectly. Yep. And then once you get it going perfectly, it's inevitably going to change because... <laughs> It just will because yeah. the salts will build up in these holes or whatever. And yeah. you might want to flush them every like six months or Probably so. Probably get more sun on the bottom one as well. So it'll take out more, more. Yeah, it'll, the, like, it'll be liquid. unbalanced because of yeah. the unbalance in the delivery of the nutrients. I'm going to get Leith to take some progress shots of the system over time. And we'll get some feedback for you guys. And I'll get some feedback myself. But... I'm stoked. Yeah, good. Yeah, it's yeah, epic, yeah. dude. It's a pretty cool hay. Like, yeah. um, I'm really excited to see how this goes uh, because I actually plan on doing, in the future, an outdoor one with larger runs of the bag media that we will create ourselves. So thank you for being on Who Chose. Thank you for taking me around Tassie and letting me explore this beautiful yeah, it state. Amazing. It was just beautiful. We had a really good trip. And thank you for watching. All right, let's... Um, plant this bad boy out oh we forgot ah uh, this is a brilliant idea that we had while we were at the bunnings so these paint what are trace. they trace paint trace. paint trace they're perfect propagation domes and they will just fit over our system like so this is going to allow us to plant seeds straight in 
that is gonna work perfectly well as a seedling propagator so that you have the humidity to start the seeds within this system. It keeps in the warmth and the humidity and that is going to be an absolutely fantastic and cheap. These are only about $2 each way of propagating your seeds. So there's no need for propagation domes, propagation areas, you propagate directly into the system. I gotta remember if I said this, so I'm just gonna go, happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs>